the newest exhibit at our wonderful Long Island Museum is all about war, and so is my story. Over a hundred years ago, a boy was born to the Gorman family in Chinle, Arizona. Like many other boys growing up on the Navajo Reservation, he learned to, uh, to herd his father's sheep and cattle and ride his father's horses. He also had a special talent. He loved to draw the, the vast desert, the, the, the mysterious canyons, people, animals. When he was 10 years old, he was sent, as required, to a boarding school, required for all Native children to be civilized. As soon as the children got to the boarding school, their hair was cut and they were issued uniforms. Wherever they went, they marched in military drill. They never just walked. If they were overheard speaking in their native language, their mouths were washed with soap, and they were given new names. The Gorman boy became Carl Nelson Gorman. Carl hated that boarding school that was doing everything it could to destroy his people's culture. So he ran away, ran back home. His father let him stay for a while and then sent him on to another boarding school where he seemed to do better. In time, he returned to the reservation where he grew up. When Carl heard that the United States had entered the Second World War and that the Marine Corps was recruiting Navajos, he enlisted, even though he was already 37 years old. Many asked Native volunteers why they offered to fight for a land that had so wronged its Native people. Simple. Before the Europeans came, the land all belonged to the First People. That land was still home. They would fight to defend their home. The war wasn't going well for the United States and the Pacific region. There were hundreds of islands scattered over thousands of miles of ocean. The Japanese were swallowing up the Pacific. What's more, the Japanese were the best code breakers in the world. The United States couldn't keep any secrets. So they decided to experiment. They thought they would try to have a code created out of a language unrelated to any other language in the entire world. No. Carl was among the first 29 Navajo Marines recruited for a project as secret as the Manhattan Project for the atomic bomb. Carl told how the 29 Marines were taken to a room with bars on the windows. The officer in charge said, okay guys, you are going to create a secret code based on your own native language. And with that, Carl said, he walked out and locked the door behind him. In the folk tale of Rumpelstiltskin, the miller's daughter is locked in a room and ordered to spin gold out of straw. And she did, with the help of Rumpelstiltskin. The Navajo Marines had no supernatural help. They had their own intelligence, determination, and a clear sense of irony. The government and church schools had done their best to wipe out the Navajo language. Wasn't it lucky they failed? In seven weeks, those 29 Marines created the first unbreakable code in the history of the United States. It couldn't be written. It had to be memorized. A Marine officer asked Carl, how is it you Navajos can memorize this complicated code so quickly? Simple. Doing what comes naturally. Navajo stories, songs, prayers, history are all handed down orally. Nothing is written. Everything is memorized. That's how Navajos learn. Imagine. Imagine massive movements of men and supplies precisely and secretly coordinated. The Navajo Marines at the front radioed their coded messages to the Navajo Marines at the rear who had to translate those coded messages into English 
quickly and accurately, and all under enemy fire. Imagine. Imagine the adjustment to wet, shadowy, tropical islands for men who were used to dry, wide-open deserts and brilliant sunlight. The non-native Marines marvel at the Navajo's strength and resourcefulness. No doubt the Navajos knew the myth of the warrior twins who fought against the evil monsters who tried to conquer the world. Changing Woman was the twins' mother. It was she who named the Navajo clans and taught them the way of beauty and harmony. Their father, the son, armed them with lightning bolts. And Spider Woman gave them magical feathers to protect them. The warrior twins overcame the evil monsters and saved the world. The Marine Command, I declared, had it not been for the Navajo Code Talkers, as they came to be known, the Marines would not have taken Iwo Jima. The Navajo Code Talkers were key to the victory of the Allies in the Pacific. Carl fought in the battles of Guadalcanal, Tinian, Tarawa, and Saipan, those strange names of faraway places. Faraway places, strange sounding names, far away over the sea. Those far away places where the strange sounding names are calling. Postscript, 
There was a news item recently that the last remaining of the original 29 code talkers died in June of this year.